My name is Laura Sanchez. I am the CEO and owner of Swadware. Swadware is a full-service IT company. We help businesses with their technology needs, with their IT infrastructure, and their online presence. <coughs> Basically, we're kind of like the external IT department of small and medium businesses. If you need help with all your computers, your technology, we help you with that. If you need help with your online presence, we help you with that part. And that's exactly why today your workshop counts either marketing and technology, because technology and marketing is becoming one thing. So today we're going to talk about Instagram, Instagram for a small business. Who is familiar with Instagram? Raise your hand. OK, perfect. Uh, from those who are already familiar with Instagram, what do you think is the main difference between Instagram and other social medias? Um, somebody want to answer the question? Instant. <laughs> Instant. It's basically pictures. One thing is like it's mostly pictures, so basically that the only the only thing is instant. Why instant? What do you think that's the main difference? Yeah, it's right away. It's exactly. Yeah, but that's that's another thing. Yeah. So that you take a picture, you can upload it. You, uh, it's everything around pictures. But another difference that people you know sometimes don't take into consideration is other social media platforms like Facebook, like Twitter, like LinkedIn. They are based in the web or on the web you know you can go to a website and upload information there and they have their app too instagram is based on an app you know the way that you can put information into instagram mostly is through your cell phone or through your tablet you cannot go to a website and upload video your pictures in there so that's one of the very important things that you need to do so many of you are already familiar with instagram so maybe you already have it for personal purposes but if you don't have it, what you need to do is go to your cell phone or to your tablet, go to the App Store or the you know, Google Play uh, Store. Or also, now there is a beta version that is coming in the Windows cell phones too. So you can look into you know, that uh, store too and download the application. That's one of the first things that you need to do. Also, I mean, as we are taking Instagram for businesses, Part of what you need to know is it's Instagram, the right social media for my business. Is my target market in Instagram, yes or no? What I can tell you so far about Instagram is that 150 million people, it's already in Instagram. In 2013, Instagram was the fastest growing social media. 80%, 18 percent of the cell phone users use Instagram so far, or more, they are growing. 68% of the users are women. So if your target market are women, th that will be a good way you know, to uh, connect with them. And 90% of the users are under the age of 35. So if your market are millennials, you definitely need to be on Instagram. And 123, uh, in 123 Fortune 500 companies are already on Instagram because of these reasons. So if your target market is in that area, so you definitely need to be on this social media. For those who are not very familiar with Instagram, I just wanna walk you through really quick of how can you open an account. So you go you know, to the uh, place, the Google app, the <coughs> app store or the Google Play, where you, down, you download you know, your app, then you're gonna see something like this where you can register. So you can register like you know, in an, any other account, you put your name, you put your uh, contact information, or you can also register through Facebook. You can log in, uh, put in your Facebook information. And you're gonna see something in the registration like this, you know, your username, your password, or you, you, you can use your Facebook info. After that, you're gonna find a screen like this when it says, find your Facebook friends. Instagram do this because they want you to make you know, as easy as possible that you connect with people. However, if you are just opening your business page for Instagram, I highly recommend it to don't connect with the people yet. Wait until you set up your page, until you have something to show. Because in, at the moment that you try to find your friends and you send them an invitation, they're going to accept, they're going to go to your Instagram, and there's nothing. So you lose your opportunity to showcase whatever you are selling. After that, you're gonna also find you know, this kind of a screen where it says find friends from contacts. You know, from your contacts, your Instagram is gonna connect with any people who has already also an Instagram account. Same thing, wait 
until you can go back to these screens after you create your account. Wait until that, just skip it. And you are going to find you know, on a screen like this, also skip it. So finally, you're going to get into your account. And it's going to look something like this, or like it is in your uh, you know, handbooks. It's, it's going to be plain or nothing. So it's your job, of course, to put the information in there. One of the, you, do, you cannot have a lot of information because Instagram, it's very, most about pictures. So you can have very brief information. Of course, the name. If you are gonna have a name, you need to have the name of your business. It's not your personal name. It's your business name because that's how people is going to find you. You need to use an email. If you're gonna use that email, I highly recommend to use your business email because you want to make this account all about your business. You can have a personal Instagram page if you want, but this is about your business. Keep things separate. Personal is personal, business is business. And also your website, you wanna have it in there, and it's a brief description of what your company is. You need to have a very brief description so when people see it, they know. Here is a, a tutorial that you can see. You know, it's a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to use Instagram. It's really simple to use it, the technical part. You just you know, download the, the, uh, you download the app, you take a picture, like it's almost like the regular cell phone camera that you take the picture, and then in the first one, like this one, if you wanna go into photography a little bit more, you can change you know, the look and feel of the photograph that you already take. You can take some videos if you want to take them. Uh, after that, when you want to post it, you can put you know, a little description if you want to have it. In, in the first part, what is the flower? You can see it. And also you can share it. We can put a location, if it's here in Chicago, or if it was, what specifically, uh, maybe you went to an expo and you took a picture in that and it was in Navy Pier. So you can connect that picture with Navy Pier. Or you come here to the city hall to have this workshop and you wanna have you know, a picture with the people who attend so you can connect it to the city hall. So it's a way to connect your picture with a location. And also you can instantly also, <laughs> at the moment that you send your picture to Instagram, you can connect it to other social medias, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, you can send it to your email. So that's one, another way to do it. This part is kind of like the technical part. It's for may, maybe for some of who, those who are not very familiar with Instagram, it may sound a little bit complicated, but it's not. The tutorial, you can learn it in 15 minutes, is just to take the picture. Or you can tell your kids or your grandkids how to take a picture on Instagram and they can teach you a crash course in five or 15 minutes, believe me. That's the easy part of Instagram. However, there is other parts that we are gonna get into that more into the strategy or technical things that are more advanced that we need to you know, cover in this uh, workshop. One of the most common questions that I get is like, okay, I get it. I take a picture with my Instagram app and they upload it, that's easy. But why if I want to upload other pictures that I cannot take with Instagram? Pictures, maybe you're a graphic designer and you wanna have a pictures you know, about your work. It's, it's not gonna be a nice picture if you just take it with your Instagram you know, photo. You want to upload a high resolution picture. Or about your products, maybe you already have the pictures and a nice photographer took them and you just want to upload them. How can you do that? So if you have uh, you know, an iPhone or an iPad, what you need to do is take those pictures into your iCloud or your iTunes and download the pictures into your cell phone. The trick is that any pictures that you have, you need to download it into your cell phone. So from your cell phone, you can pull that pictures and upload it into Instagram. If you have an Android, then you can use other sources like Dropbox or Google Drive. Are you familiar with those sources? Dropbox and Google Drive are places where you can upload information. Sometimes there are free accounts, so it's like having a space on the cloud or on another person's server, and you can have a, available that information to you. For doing that, you also need to download the app in your cell phone, the Dropbox app, so you can upload in there your, uh, your photos of the Google Drive. And if you're not very tech savvy and you are like, you know what, this is so complicated, the easiest way to do it <coughs> is just send, you, send yourself an email. An email that you can, you attach the pictures, you can do it in your computer, you attach the picture, and then you open that pictures in your cell phone. And then you save that picture into your cell phone. 
the trick of from, your from your email. Exactly. From your email, you open the pictures and then you save it. So that's one of the easiest ways to do it. And the trick is you need to get those pictures somehow into your cell phone so you can upload it to Instagram. So another question that I commonly get is, OK, now I have my account. I upload the pictures. But how can I connect you know, my Instagram to another social media? So that's why this is more, uh, it's a little bit technical, but it's really easy. So you are going to go to your page. It's going to look like, like the first you know, uh, image, when it's going to be your logo, your description. Basically, you are going into my account. That is uh, this part. And you need to go in there. You know, where is you know, the little guy? You're going to see a little guy into your uh, Instagram account. So you go into that. Where is the green arrow? And then on top of that, there is going to be three, three buttons. You click in there. In there, you're going to see your options. That is the next you know, uh, image that you're going to see, the options. Then you see settings. And you click in there, in link accounts. When you click in settings, you're going to see the link accounts options. When you have Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, Trumbull, Flickr, and, and the other one. So those are the only ones that you can connect. So that's the way to connect it with other social media. It is worth it to connect it, because with just one picture that you upload to Instagram, you are also you know, putting the information in other social media that you, have, that you already have. So you don't have to go back and do the same process. So that's how you can connect it with Facebook. And another thing is how to use Instagram off the web. Although you cannot, you cannot upload pictures you know, through your computer into Instagram, there is a web version. Once you have your, you know, your, uh, your account, you can log in. You can go to Instagram.com, and you can log in. But the only thing that you can change in that is your name, your email, your username, your password, and your description. So that's the only thing. You cannot upload things. So just so you know that you can go in there. So if you don't want to write your description you know, through the uh, cell phone, you can go into the website and do it. So it's easier for some people to do that. And you can edit your profile. Once you have your account, you're familiar with, you know, with Instagram, with the app, of course, you need to create a company profile. That's the first thing that you need to do. So a company profile, it's, as we saw in the account, you need to put your name. And also, I highly recommend you, because it's going to be the name of your company, to have a logo. A lot of businesses, they don't have a logo. They start and they don't have a logo. So that is one of the most important things. People remember images. So for your business, as soon as you can, have a logo. If you don't have the resources right now because you are just starting, at least if your logo is just letters, be consistent with the letters. So when people see that image, that name, they remember you. If people see one name in some letters and then in another letters and different kind of images, they're going to get confused because, I don't know, they don't know if there's your same company or another thing. So it has to be very clear. Like here, let's say Starbucks. You can see the logo of Starbucks. They arrive into that, you know, into that place. Sometimes there is people who sell, who sell in services, right? And most of the people knows you. Maybe you are a trainer. So, OK, maybe you don't have a logo at the, at the moment you know, for your business. You're just a trainer. You can take a picture of yourself in that case. But if your business is not around yourself only, then you have to have a logo. Then we have in your description, your description on the web is going to appear like that. And you don't have more than 200 characters. So you just have those characters to describe what you want to say about your business. And last but not least, your website. You just have one link, and that link is to your website. So it is really important that if you're going to connect with someone, you have a link. So if they want to go to your website, they can see more information about who you are and what you do. Once you have your company profile, that is, you know, or what it is, what I mentioned it, you need to take pictures with a strategy. It's just not taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures. You have to be very strategic 
of what kind of pictures are you taking and why. There is some people, it is you know, growing this so much that there is some companies who knows that for every picture, every post that they put into Instagram, that generates them a hundred dollars. So you can become very strategic with Instagram. Some of the pictures that you, you know, should take pictures of, it's what I mentioned it here. Behind the scenes of your business, events, call to actions, inspiration and motivational quotes, products, services, and videos. And we're gonna go through each one in the next slides. <coughs> here, we're talking more about products. If your business is about products, then you have to take pictures of what you sell. You know, clothes, if you're in retail, if you sell food, that's where you wanna show products. And also people using your products, of course. So any, any how, find creative ways of how people is using what you are selling. Who, uh, who sells products here? What kind of products do you sell? Chocolate. Chocolate, Chocolate. okay. So, <laughs> chocolate, that's, you can, you need to find, of course, you need to, to put your chocolate, but find ways to make the chocolate, you know, attractive, fun. So when people see the pictures, it's not just, there's tons of chocolates. Why your chocolate's different? Why your chocolate's gonna be memorable for them? Maybe you create, you know, a small face with your chocolates. Oh, that's, that's a creative way to take a picture about chocolate. Or if you're a restaurant, so you take a pictures of your food of people eating your food. So that's what you wanna you know, do. In Instagram, it's all about visuals. The people who can show the products better, it's, it's easier. Yes? So what's the difference between having your images on your website and Instagram? What's the benefit? Uh, the difference is in your website, you wanna have the best pictures only because it's going to be kind of like your portfolio. You cannot put, I mean, you don't want to put like a hundred pictures in your website because nobody's going to see them. You just want to showcase your best work. But in Instagram, you can showcase your work, your, you know, all what is happening. People can see past work, new work, and not only that, you can, they can see, you know, the process of creating that. You don't put, you know, really the process in your website. You just put, you know, maybe the before and after, but not the process. So Instagram is more the behind the scenes. And it's a way to humanize your business. A website, it's more like, you know, like a brochure online or just straightforward information you wanna show to your, to your clients. Is there any question there? Um, I was gonna uh, say also another good way to have people um, kind of advertise that they're using your products is the hashtag. Oh yes, we're gonna go that into later, okay. into that, yes. So if you sell, you know, products or visuals, mm -hmm. maybe you, it, what you're selling, you're renting your facility for something. You, you are uh, you know, a facility manager or something like that. If that's what you do, then you have to take pictures of your facilities, right? Like Disneyland, of course. They have to take pictures of how amazing is you know, their facilities. But there is a trick when it comes to services, right? How can you show your service? It's not something visual sometimes. It's not tangible. Like this page is for a law firm. How can you show that into Instagram? So how they use that, it's law, uh, lawyers. I mean, nobody likes a lot of lawyers because they tend to be mean. So they, they want to show a friendly face of their lawyers. So if they have, you know, party, uh, company or corporate party, they wanna show them, you know, our lawyers also, they party, they get together, they're friendly. So that's one way of doing it. You show the behind the scenes. You show the events that you have, an accounting firm. That's boring, that's numbers. But they have Christmas party. They interact with the client. They do other things. That that's a way that you can show, you know, my business, it's friendly. It's not that you're going to arrive and people is going to be mad and just like, uh, you know, not friendly, the customer service is bad. So that's a way of showing. But everything it's about, you know, how creative you are with the pictures. It's just, the, that's why it says, take a picture with a strategy. If you are in the service business, it's really important. Maybe I'm in IT, right? And in the IT, there is the beautiful part of websites and design, so I can show that. But there is another part that it's more the infrastructure. But I can show maybe the server room, that it's a clean server room. 
You have no idea how many times I go to a place where the server room is it's horrible, it's cables all over the place. So that way my clients can see, oh, they have you know, clean, clean server rooms. They take care of how things look like. So in services, it's a little bit more challenging, but there is a way to find you know, which pictures are going to help you to connect with that person. Uh, another way it's, you know, you can have videos. If you are, uh, you know, in the service industry and you want to have a, a quick tip about something, you can have a tip about that. And now Instagram, you can have videos too. In this case, the video is about, you know, how to paint your nails. So another very, very uh, strong way to send messages is with quotes or phrases. You take a picture or you find a picture that you like and you put the quote into the picture, like it is here. We are out there, the ones who push you. So you want to inspire people. You want to that make people to connect with your service somehow. Like, do you want to have a you know a smiley day? Just eat our chocolates or something like that. So we find you know the smiley face with chocolates. So that's that's the way that you need to connect. I I know, you know, one a coach that they help, or in a doctor, they help to lose weight with people. So what they do is they put inspirational quotes and you know, images about you know, losing weight. So they put one thing with a, for a quote, another picture about you know, products that they can use to lose weight, another picture is about you know, the before and after of their clients. So it has to be a variation of things that you have to put into that. And also a call to action. A call to action is you want people to do something. In this case, Coca-Cola, what they are doing is they are asking people to double tap to unwrap that image. Basically, a double tap, if you double tap into an image, it's like liking an image. So it's a the new way to like it in Instagram. So they are waiting for 800 people to double tap that, to like the pictures, and then they're going to put, put a picture you know, with whatever is inside. Uh, that image. So you can request people to do something and a call to action. Many people also ask me, okay, I, I know how to take the pictures, now you tell me how to upload the pictures, how can I put a text into the pictures? So one way to do it, and the easiest one, is to you can go to your store again where you download apps and you can download these apps. For, app, for um, <coughs> Mac, Quipio and Overgram are free apps, and for Android, Textgram and Instacode are free apps. Basically, what you do is you download the app, you pull your, you know, already your text, your images are in your cell phone, you select that image, and then you start playing, and with the app, you can put the text, whatever text you want. These are tons of apps. These are the free ones that are, you know, I find out that they are good. There is other ones who have, are more creative, they are, you know, you have to pay one or two dollars. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. There is tons of variety of apps that you can put information. You can not only put text, you can create collage into that. All the, you know, the picture uh, wave, it's coming to be very, very strong. So your, your job is to be creative. How am I going to get the attention of my market? <laughs> Once we have, you know, our pictures, and we already take it with a strategy, we go to the next thing. We use hashtags and mentions. Because hashtags, you know, the, for those who are very familiar with Twitter, are something that Twitter is starting, it's getting very strong, stronger for those who are not very familiar. Hashtag, the only thing is, you know, the number sign and then a word. What that is, it's help you to connect with other conversations that are related to that word. You can find hashtags that are already created for some people and connecting to that. So people who usually don't uh, reach can see your hashtag, can see your pictures, and they say, oh, I like this. Or you can create your own, because sometimes it doesn't exist. Maybe you are creating a specific campaign about something. So you can create your own hashtags if you want. So in my case, I like to create you know, the Latina power hashtag, right? So you can create whatever it makes sense for your business. Some of the hashtags that it will be good for you to have is like hashtag shop local, if you are a store, a retail store, hashtag small business owner, hashtag shop small, hashtag local business, and hashtag business Saturday. 
for those who doesn't know what Small Business Saturday is, is as after you know Black Friday, there is uh, uh, this Small Business Saturday. Then American Express is you know empowering people to shop local. So if you have a retail store, I highly recommend it to get into that because that's that's a way to have more visibility about your business. And but hashtags are good, but do not overuse hashtags. You want to have into your pictures, you know, one up to three hashtags perhaps, but because they are really good to connect, there is people who overuse it. I don't know if you can see in your slides or here. They put like, I don't know, like 15 hashtags. That's too much. You are losing the purpose of hashtags. Up, up to one, two, three, that's fine. More than that, it's going to be like, like spam because you are really not connecting with, you know, with anyone. Question that I had get always, how to find users in hashtags. So what you need to go is you go into data start, what is the green arrow, and then you click, you're gonna find all you know, different kind of pictures of people that you are following. Then you go into that uh, other place when you can, you know, the search icon that is on top, right there. And you click in there, and then you have a space to type things. You have, you're gonna have users and tags. If you wanna find users, you go into the users tab. If you wanna have tabs, you go into the tags tab. In tags, you can, you know, search for hashtags that are already there. Like in this case, I search for a small business. So those, you know, hashtags that are in there, small business, small business Saturday, small business owners that I just mentioned it, are into that. So that's a way to find hashtags who are already there, or if they are not, then it's your own hashtag. So that's, that's a way to start your own strategy. Where do you go to find that? Right there, that uh, when you have your account, let me go again. When you open your yeah, Instagram, your you go into, in there, you know, there is a star, the green yeah. arrow. And then once you go to a, into that screen, you go on top. Mm. And you know, in the search icon, you click in there, and then you're gonna see you know, an image like the next one. And you have users, tags, and then you, you search for tags. So that's how you can do it. Are you saying find users and tags? Is it so that you can find users to be participating in a conversation? And why would you? Oh, for? users, it's like in users you can find other people who is in Instagram. For example, if you want to find my company, you want to follow <coughs> me on Instagram. So you go to users and you search for Swadware LLC. So you, if you want to find you know, other companies, if you say to your friends, you know what, I'm in Instagram right now and they didn't know, find me. They go to users and they find your company. If you want to find someone or find you, someone to find you, you can just say, oh, this is my user. If there is, for whatever reason, you were not able to connect as a Facebook connection or as a you know, contact connection through your cell phone, that's another way to find users. So unlike Instagram is different than Twitter where people have followers and Facebook has, but does, does that work the same way with Instagram? People have followers? Yes, yeah, so in Instagram is the same. You have people who follow you and people and you follow other people. So it's the same thing. And you, of course what you want to do is like more people follow you. The more people follow you, the more people can see what you are, you know, posting into that. And the next thing will be the badges. That's a feature that Instagram has. And a badge is simply, you go into your web, you know, uh, you log in into your account on your computer, on the web, and you can find, it's be, um, on top of logout, it says badges. And you're gonna see on the screen like this one. If you see in number one, it says select your badge, there is different images, and then copy this code. So what basically a badge is, it's a link to your Instagram that link that you want to use it or put it in your website, you want to put it in your, um, in your blog, in whatever other resources that you have, and you can put code. Code is all these you know, little things that are on the green arrow that mostly programmers understand, but regular people don't. So if you have access in your website to put the code, you just copy and paste that. If not, you give that information to the person who is helping you design your website. It's one way to put your link, you know, into your website. If you if you want to have, you know, another thing is like you have to go 
and find the picture, and then you find a picture and you make a link into that picture, or you just make a simple link. You know, there is many things. The purpose is that you want people who go to your website, they know that you're in Instagram and there is a link to your Instagram page. So the more traffic you have back and forth, the more it's gonna help you to have better rankings in Google because the more traffic your pages, your social media pages and your website <coughs> has, the more Google is going to see, oh, this page is, uh, this company is relevant for this specific purpose. So it's gonna come up more and more. Is there any question about the badges? No? Yes. Okay. So the badges link to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all your guesses, you can them all through badges. No, this badge is only for Instagram. Okay. It's only for Instagram. It's a, it's a code, you know, that is going to be on the back of your, of your website that you copy paste. On the back is code. On the front, it's an image that your users are going to see that image. And they click there and they go to your Instagram page. So all the websites, basically on the back, they are code. They are very boring code. So, and on the front, for all the regular people, they are images. They are, you know, they do things. So that's one way that Instagram is trying to help you, you know, make things easier. And you can create your badge by yourself. You don't need your website designer to create your badge? It depends. Sometimes there are some platforms that are like kind of Goldari platforms that are pre-designed. And they say, oh, if you want to have a code for something, you can put it in there. So sometimes if you are, you know, enough tech savvy, you can do it by yourself. If not, then you have to go with, you know, a person who is designing, uh, who's a web designer. Yeah, in, in websites, it's all about how complicated the website are. There is many platforms that you can do things by yourself. If you are, you know, take savvy enough, you can create it and put it together, something simple. But if the w while you are growing, you are going to see that you need a more interactive and complicated website. So then that's the time. In my experience, usually a business who is starting just with a regular basic website, it's fine. After three or four years, then you want to have a better website. Yes? So in the badge, you can go in there, it says you promote your uh, Instagram profile. So if I had a sale going on, I could put it on that badge. Is that what that's saying? Uh, um, is there is, if there's something on a website that you have a sale, you have your announcement, and you can have a way to put a code in there, mm -hmm. yes, you can have it. Anywhere that you can put that code, just copy and paste, it's, uh, you can put it, the Instagram badge. Yes? Uh, is there a wide selection of badges that you can use, and can you put your own image up to make it your, your own unique badge? Yes, you can do it. I mean, this is an easy way for people to do it. Just they don't have to find the pay, the image or find another thing. But if you want, you want you you can create your own, you know, you can create your own icon or find an icon and then put a link. It's different ways to put it. The main purpose is somehow you need to create a, a link to your Instagram page so more people can see it and they can see not only the the, the projects that you have on your website, they can see more things in your Instagram page. Yes. I have a question related to the whole concept of Instagram. So uh -huh. you, you know, one is connected to Facebook, and then when I receive this information, what do I do? Unless one is connected to Instagram, that's the only way to go to Facebook. Uh, can you ask the question again? Um, you know, with Instagram, uh -huh. the users can be connected to Facebook. Uh -huh. Okay, so for me, I'm not an Instagram user yet, but if I'm a Facebook user mm -hmm. and I come across this information, how do I participate to what they are sharing? I see hashtags, I see videos. How do, if I'm a Facebook user, how can I participate? Uh, with hashtags, Instagram? I think mostly hashtags are becoming interrelating with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. That's one way to participate. Another way, it's if you're already <coughs> on Facebook and you want to have your Instagram page, you open, you connect your Facebook account into Instagram. When you open your account, uh, you log in as your Facebook, and that way you create your Instagram page, and the people who is on Facebook know that now you're on Instagram. So it is very interrelated somehow, the Instagram so with I can Facebook. Do, I can do, excuse me, I can do um, Instagram now to Facebook. No, 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 no. Instagram is by itself. It's just connected. Instagram is Instagram and Facebook is Facebook. But if you connect Instagram with your Facebook, whatever you put in Instagram, you can send it directly to your Facebook. But what you put in Facebook, you cannot send it directly to Instagram. Okay? 
Yes. One question about the back is even on Facebook has where you can put like the like button on your website so people don't have to go to your Facebook page to like you. Is there something on Instagram where people could click and follow you automatically without having to go to your profile? Yeah, there is uh, there is a way. I don't grab this information here. This is more, you know, another ca type of coding. Okay. So you can you have to put it in there. So if you can, if you have my information, you can send me an email if that's what you want to put, and I can you know let you know. But you can have you know some. It's not only the like button. Mm -hmm. It's basically a, an embedded thing where you can show certain pictures into that, and it's a like small version of your Instagram page into your page. But that will require some, you know, uh, coding abilities. It's not as, you know, straightforward as a badge. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other? Okay. Um, I have seen on Facebook where people will put a post up, and then at the bottom they'll do a hashtag, which is almost a byline for a joke to what they said. If they said something about their dog, they'll say hashtag I love my pooch or something. I clicked on those, and it brings up an image of whoever made the post and the hashtag, and then it's blank. So they really didn't use it for the purpose, I guess, that I had yes. it before. It was almost like a joke. What, it, what are those hashtags in Facebook? How can we use those hashtags in that manner to help us? I mean... One of the things is like you want to know, that's why I show you how to look the hashtags in Instagram. If you want to find the hashtags in Facebook, I mean, there's an old way to find it. I, I will need to show you. But through Instagram, you can use it. Same hashtags that you're using here, you can use it in Facebook. And you want to know with what that hashtag is connected. Once you click in the hashtag, you can see the conversations that are going on around that hashtag. If, if that is what you want to be related with, then you use that hashtag. If not, then you don't use it. But yeah, I mean, it's becoming as you know common. And of course, they want to put, they want to say something right now, especially kids, and they just want to put hashtag something, it, even if they don't make sense. It's just funny for them. So in your case, you need to be strategic. It has to be more business, business-wise. You have to think in that area. For kids, that's why I'm, I'm telling you. Kids are very coming, very, very integrated with the social media. However, they are losing the part that you cannot say that many stupid things <laughs> online because that is going to reflect on you. They are oversharing, oversaying things. Because so, they're because they're all children. So, I mean, this is a sign out of my personal things, but I think there, it has to be regulation. As a business owner, uh, not only for Instagram, but for all your other social media things, you need to have regulations of what kind of information are you going to post, what are you not going to post, who can post, who cannot post. So regulations are important as a business because now this can get super messy. There is an example, um, and this has been broadcasting, but I think I can cite this example. It was an example that somebody in, you know, in a change that sell food change, it was funny for them to grab, you know, the, the, uh, the food, when they have the, the food there, it was lettuce, and they step into that. And they post that into Facebook. So imagine what was the reaction of the people. I go and purchase things in that change, I go and grab my food, and this guy is stepping into my food, I will never go there. So that can have, social media can have a regular, a very good impact into your business, but also a very bad impact. And that's something that not only Instagram, but in all your social media, you need to be very careful what you post. Because especially small businesses, you are selling yourself, so your reputation goes with whatever is exposed into that. It's not that I just put my kid to put, you know, take picture of whatever you want. No, it's that I really, thinking about my business, how can I grow it, and how can I show that my business has a good reputation, that we care about our customers, that we care about our quality of our services, that's what you <coughs> want to show into that. So integrity and relevance. Exactly. Yes? Do you have a recommended um, amount of posting, like what would be the minimum, and then what's overposting? Yes. <laughs> overposting, I mean, 
I think what kids are doing, they have nothing to do, I think, in their lives, they're not busy enough, so they post like every single uh, minute, like every hour, that's, that's a lot of things. You need to create things that people see it and they say it's relevant. The recommended thing to post is like three posts a day, something in the morning, something in the you know middle of the day, and something in the evening. And it has to be a variation. In the morning, it's maybe, uh, if you are a coach, right, you want to show what you are eating for that day, something healthy. And then in the, in the middle of the day, you want to show that you are uh, the products that you are selling, if you sell you know, products to lose weight. And in the night, you can show a motivational quote. You know, Tomorrow you're going to start a new day and you want to you know, be a new you, so you're going to lose weight. So something like that. It has to have a variation, but the recommendation is three posts. If there is sometimes there's people who doesn't have the time to do the three posts of the day, maybe once a day, maybe once a week. Uh, the beauty about Instagram is that you don't have to be posting as frequent as in other social medias because whatever information is there, it's not, uh, you can, it doesn't have to look outdated unless it's you know, a date in there or something very specific. But uh, I highly recommend you to at least you know, post three times a week if you're really busy. If not three times a day, yes. Yes, there is some uh, you know resources that you can use to schedule it them in advance. Uh, I believe one of those is Hootsuite. Uh, Hootsuite, yeah, but there is many others. So there is a lot of social media managers that you can have, so you can pre-schedule it. But with Instagram, you need to be you know very strategic about what the time it's it's going to be, you know, right. and those kind of things. Oh, yeah, for, for those, I'm sure there is some features and there is other things. Mm -hmm. uh, I will need to look my, into that. But mostly, yes, in Instagram, once you take a picture, mm -hmm. then you need to post it immediately. That's why it's instant. Right. That's the beauty of the instant. Mm -hmm. If you want to think about the picture and you know create it and everything, then I don't take the pictures with Instagram. Take it just with your cell phone, yeah. and then you save it, and then you, you know, tweak it and edit it, and then you put it back. So a lot of the pictures that you find in Instagram, if you want to take it with Instagram, you are going to make sure that it, you need to post it immediately. Next thing, I mean, once we know what is Instagram, how it works, uh, we already have our pictures in there. Instagram, it's becoming a monster by itself. There is a lot of apps that are integrating with that. And as you need to be generating content, sometimes you cannot generate enough content you know, at the speed that you, your business needs. So what other people are doing to take Instagram to the next level is generate, you know, encourage their users to generate content. Maybe uh, you have someone who is eating your chocolate and they take a picture of them themselves and they tag you. So you can select those pictures, the best ones pictures, and then put it into your Instagram page. If someone is using your clothes, or someone is in your office and it's really having fun, and you know they take a picture and they tag you. Ask your customers to tag you in pictures, and then you can select which one do you want to post into your Instagram. Uh, but be very careful with pictures too, because if you're taking the picture, and let's say that you are taking a picture of a meeting, and there is people in there, you need to have the permission of that people to be posted into your Instagram. So be very careful with the pictures if there is people because you need to have the permission of that person to be into your picture, okay? Because you can get in trouble. Uh, another thing that people are doing is create contests into Instagram. There is an app, the name is Wishbound, and basically this app for running contests that let your fans submit photos from Instagram on your face page, Twitter or website. So it's a, basically an app that help you interconnect you know, the different social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with pictures 
and it's a contest. But for doing that, you need to have that app, you need to have that service, and you have to pay extra for those things. Or uh, right now, Instagram doesn't have, you know, uh, results or information about how many people it's uh, going to your page or what is the results that you're having. So you can use Statigram if you want to be more you know, precise in how your campaigns are going. You can use this uh, other service, Statig Statigram, to uh, measure the results of your campaigns. Because at the end, everything is about measuring. For personal purposes, you can take the picture of whatever, it's fine. But for business, if it's not working, and if you don't know that it's not working, then you know, you're wasting your time. Yes? Do you have any data that shows that Instagram does work for your business? Do you have any information? There is a lot of articles uh, about, you know, people who, how Instagram become important for that. One of the articles I read is that, that there is people who, of course, there is a tons of strategy that they put into place and they know exactly that every single post they have, ret their return of investment, it's $100. But there is not a specific place right now <coughs> as lo uh, that I know, I'm, I'm aware of, that it says, you know, how much this social media works. And the thing is, like, social media, it's growing really fast. It's still relatively new. And there is more and more, you know, things uh, growing that it is up to the business owner to know if it makes sense for you or not to use it. For, I, there is people who say, it's like, I don't understand Twitter, and I don't think Twitter is for, right for me. So if you already see that Twitter, you, you want to show pictures, then you don't have to be in Twitter. You have to be more in Instagram. If you want to show, if your business is more about information, then you have to be on Facebook because it's more about information. And who is using it? If your target market are millennials, you have to be in Instagram because that's what they are using. They prefer that. But if your target market is like, you know, all older people, other generations who are more, they are more in Facebook, then you have to be in Facebook. You don't need to be in Instagram. Oh. So it, it, it's all about what you sell and who your target market is. It's all about your business strategy. This is just one tool, but the tools are as good as how you use them. So we can be here all day long talking about how amazing Instagram is, but if you're just selling, you know, healthcare for the elderly, I mean, Instagram is not going to do any good for you because they are not your, your clients. So this is my contact information, and you know, I can take more questions. Let me see what time is it. Oh, we still have you know, some time, so yes? The difference between Pinterest, which is also a picture of an Instagram, is it the population? Like, who uses Pinterest versus the millennials? The millennials are using a lot of the Pinterest, mm -hmm. but it's it's about pictures, however, in Pinterest, it's not only pictures by itself, it's also more information. The difference in Instagram is more pictures and whatever is in the picture. People don't want to read, millennials don't want to read, so whatever I can see, that's, you know, what we are good. If the, in Instagram, then there's articles, there's, I mean, in Pinterest, there is articles, there is other things, so it's more about the information with the image, not only the image by itself. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the legal implications with posting someone else's picture on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. With that, it's happening so fast. Are you recommending just a verbal agreement or? A verbal. Uh, 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 I. I'm going to talk like a lawyer right now <laughs> because I don't want you to take like ch your chances. But I think what a lawyer was, will say is like if there's very sensible pictures. Let's say that you are in an early childhood education business. There is kids. Then you need a written agreement because you can get sued. We are talking about kids. Uh, if there is a video, maybe you can. You want to have a testimonial of your clients, and you are, you know, basically uh, using your cell phone for the video. At the end of the video, you can say, "Can I post this?" And they say yes. So we already say yes. You need to have a proof to show that they agreed to that. And verbal, it's going to be questionable. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's your war against theirs. Okay. So This is off the subject of Instagram, but are QR codes still considered relevant? I have heard nothing about QR codes in a while. 
I think it's it's a very good way to is the I mean approach certain things definitely is still relevant in the business but it depends what you are trying to accomplish everything in technology is what is your strategy on mind on your mind and which kind of people is your again your customer if your customers are older people it's not relevant at all they don't care but if it's younger people of course yeah you need to do something around that yes In the park, as long as there are no people or people who can be identified, uh, yes. But if there's people who can easily be identified, uh, not really. You need to be very careful. There is, uh, especially because you are using that picture for business purposes. It's not personal purposes. It's business. So if they want to sue you, I mean, maybe right now you're very small. You're under the radar. Nothing happens. But in the future, you can become a that's what you're going to do, right? Become a really strong and uh, well-known business, then they, they want to try to sue you. And like in your, in your website, there is a lot of people who come into me, they want to create their website, and I ask them, do you have pictures? And they were like, no, but you can go Google them and just, you know, tug those pictures, and we just put in them. We're like, no, I cannot do that. Because it's, uh, it's illegal, at least here. It's illegal to take those pictures and put it into your website. You have to have the permission to use that pictures. So that's why you, you have to, you know, either purchase them, create it yourselves, or you know, ask for the permission. Or can you go to a store event, like say um, Martha Stewart is promoting her product, and you go into the store, can you take photos of that? I I guess you can, you know, as long as there's there's some products you are promoting their product, should be fine. But there is not a person or you know, somehow the person it's just I think in this case it is, uh, I need to talk more with a lawyer in that part because it's just becoming blurry. You know, the, the famous selfies, they can be complicated. I don't know if, if there was a case of this, you know, famous person who, was, who took a picture um, with another famous person and they, the, one of the person is a politician, so he thought it was just a personal picture and then he posted and it seems that that politician is promoting what the other person sells. So that can become a conflict of interest. So right now we are in a blurry area that we don't know exactly at what time where it's been legal or illegal if we're using right or wrong. I mean, just try to be careful with the pictures that you use. It's, it's a very beautiful thing, you know, the pictures, but it can be a liability too. So that's something that most of the people don't think and when you're using for personal purposes, as I say it again, it's easier to get away with certain things, but now you're using it for business. So it, more people, they are going to find a way to do that. And that's something that social media, it's becoming regulated, but it's, it's a process. So right now in the middle point, we're in a blurry part, unfortunately. The techniques, I think, is like use your other social media. If you are already in other social medias, like finding your Facebook people, find it, uh, people in Twitter, find posts in, in those. Now we are in Instagram, follow us. So that's, you know, a way. There is no kind of shortcuts, really. So people will, tons of people will follow you. But you have to be creative in how use the other resources that you have in your website. Now we are in Instagram. Now we can connect with you that way. So it's an Instagram, surprisingly, I see there's people who tell me, you know what, I just opened my account and tons of people is following me right now. It's like after you open an account, like 13 people were, were following them. So it's becoming faster uh, into Instagram than in other social media uh, things. I'm sorry, lady with the blue, the, the blue blouse. Yes. Uh, what are the costs for your uh, basically, we work in different ways. Sometimes it can be a project, so we can, you know, create the setup of your Instagram and give you a little bit coach, or it can be more an ongoing thing. There is some uh, people who prefer to that we take care of their Instagram, so they don't have to do it. So it depends. But our hourly rate so far is a hundred dollars. So you have the initial cost would be a hundred dollars, and then a hundred dollars for every meeting, or 
No, our hourly rate is $100, just to have an idea. We can create a project, but for the first uh, conference call, we can have a conference call at the first hour, a half an hour. It's, it's free. I mean, I just want to know about your, what you do, how you do it, and if we can help you. If we see that we can help you, we we'll definitely move forward with that. Yes. Uh, so people upload pictures and you cannot well, share it or like it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but I've noticed that. Like, it's kind of something that's a trend. That's something you're aware of. I, I, unfortunately, I wasn't aware of that. Usually, the common case is that once a picture is out there, you can share it. That's the purpose of social media. But if you have an example and you want to, you will have my email or you, you can send it to me, then I, I can let you know why. Yes. So, and also that is really important. Uh, when you try to work with someone, and if you wanna create your website, if you wanna have uh, your Instagram page, look for things that you like. Go to Instagram and look for other pages, other people who does similar thing of what you do, or, uh, you know, of their websites, or whatever it is, look for things to get ideas. So when you meet with someone, that someone can see what you see. Because sometimes it can be very uh, ab abstract. You know, technology and the creativity, it's, it's, co it's different. So you can see, you know what, I like this. So that way people like me, oh, okay, I know what kind of things do you like, in which area do we have to move. So the visual, the more, uh, you know, visual help that you can give us, it's, it's better. Do a little research, maybe there is another pages in Instagram who does what you do and you can get ideas into that. So, yes. Um, one thing I saw, I saw on Facebook was um, if you go to a website and they say if you like us on Facebook, <coughs> we'll give you like 5% off and 5% uh, off coupon code for you when you check out. Uh -huh. That's like one of the ways that some businesses, you know, use social media to like get people to follow them. Yes, I mean, you can give incentives like that. You know, follow me and then I can give you a gift card, a discount. There is different kind of ways uh, to do it. But where are you posting that information? You're not posting it in Facebook. You're posting it in other resources so they can go into your Facebook, right? So that's what I'm, I'm saying. You know, use creative ideas in other places that you already have set up so you can redirect people to your Instagram page. So in here are all my social media, my company's social media pages. So please, if you like the, the workshop, I would really appreciate that you follow us. We have more, I give more workshops uh, every year with the city of Chicago. We do different kind of workshops about relevant things that we know it's important for small businesses. Because I know the social media and the technology are growing so fast and it's complicated for many people to start, you know, relevant, to know all what is, what is happening. So I highly encourage you to become uh, to keep involved, you know, with these workshops because the information and the knowledge that you can get is priceless. And if it's not here in another place, it may cost you a lot. So I, I highly, you know, I want to thank you for your time, for being here, for your questions. If there's any other questions that you have, please feel free to, you know, on the back of your slides is my contact information. If you, if not, I. Some of you took my business card. If you don't have it, I can give it to you. And I, I welcome you, and I hope your business, you know, grow and and you do good. You do very good. Yes. I'm sorry. Is it okay to take your picture and to tweet about today's session? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, yes. It's it's on the on the camera that I agree. So. <laughs> Thank you.